If you're familiar with the uprising of black artists in Columbus, Ohio, a name that you more than likely have heard was Smokey Brown. The black artists of Columbus stuck together and supported each other. The first oh, painting. Smokey was the one to buy my very first painting when I started to exhibit. And Kojo was the one hiring me to help in his art gallery. Smokey was not only an artist, but an investor in other artists as well. During Duart's early years exploring his artistry, he crossed paths with legendary artist Smokey Brown and became his mentee. Laverne Brown, the wife of Smokey Brown, was left with all of his art once he passed away. After years of questioning what to do with the work, she decided to pass it along to Duart. What, what, what was it about Duart that made Smokey take to him the way that he did? I think it was... Smokey could, could see, he like had a second sight about people and he was never wrong about a person. I think it was just that Duarte had such a good heart. I've never met anyone who's got as good a heart as Duarte. I mean, he's just really genuine. And Smokey is very seldom wrong about that, you know, and a person. He can see that and he gravitates to that. And since I didn't have no connection to no real father and my grandfather and no fathers, I had a connection with Smokey. All the seniors thought I was his son, so yeah, he used to I, I, was his son. and I wrote I wrote in the paper uh, about my father not being there, and they thought that was I was talking about Smokey. <laughs> Shortly after Laverne invited Duart over to receive Smokey's art, Duart's wife Pat found a recording she taped of Smokey playing the piano at their home. And I couldn't believe it because when I I knew Rick was getting this work, <clears throat> I woke up. And I, I had gotten some tapes, tapes out, but I don't know, that one was just sitting right in front of me. I'm like, and I put it in there, and my cassette tape back there, and I was like, oh, that's Smokey. Because I didn't even know I had that. I knew we recorded it, but I didn't know I still had it. Pat shared how Smokey spent time with the kids, and how he and Laverne made them feel like family. And Smokey taught Ricky and April. We would teach them some techniques on the piano trying to teach them songs and how to play it it was a nice feeling because you know i did you know i had a grandpa that i wasn't close to him you know he just lived in philadelphia and we didn't see him much and uh, so it was like you know a real family when he came over him and laverne he just made us feel well we just felt accepted i felt accepted and i felt that they really loved us once Laverne gave Duart Smokey's art, it was full of pieces never seen, as well familiar ones. Hmm. I can't. Oh wow! So that's what. I, when you see all this, it kind of brings everything back. Like very like. Pull it out. Oh, I'm like, like, hurry up, man. You can't rush. You can't rush. <laughs> you can't rush. <laughs> Everything he put for my wife. For my wife, so I wish you wouldn't put. That oh, on. this was the Ebony Voice uh, thing we did on him. Well, this is the Ebony. Y'all did a. Uh, I made this up. I made this. You made that? Yeah, we made this. We. Um, I worked with the. That was his dream. He wanted to be on the cover of Life Ebony magazine, magazine or Ebony magazine. And this is this is. You really worked that material and stuff with this. Mm -hmm. wow. What made you want to give it to Duart? Because Smokey loved Duart, and I know that Duart will do the best thing for the art. There's a whole lot of things. It feels like family first. Mm -hmm. It feels like I, I, I got an inheritance. And it feels like God's been watching me my whole life. That's what it really feels like. It's kind of hard to feel anything else. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, 
Well, we love, Smokey and I both, we love you since the first time we laid eyes on you. You uh, and Pat, you and your family, we just loved you. Yeah. Uh, Good people. It feels like uh, my own father could never say, you know, I'm proud of you, I know you are, but I was given other family. The whole premise of my work is looking for family. And what is this but finding family mm -hmm. and being able to share family stories. Mm -hmm. So it's like what an honor, you know, just. After we looked at Smokey's work, Laverne explained why she held on to the art and refused to sell it to art institutions. Because the museum has never really been uh, friendly to African-American artists, actually, you know. So, you know, if you get shown in there, oh well. If you don't, oh well. <laughs> but that was my issue with giving it to an institution. Yeah. Because, you know, when things go out of sorts, this director might like it and that one might not. It might sit in a, you know, warehouse somewhere, you know, thrown away, you know, who knows. So I didn't feel comfortable in, you know, putting it in in, in the hands of any institution because, you know, when the, when the powers that be change, everything changes, everything changes. you know, so like they might not appreciate it at all and just people, throw it out, throw it out. You know, there's a, there's a, a wealth that's inside this that if you don't understand it, you, you would squander it. So mm -hmm. it's like, I feel like that, like when you get this inheritance that now you, you want to see what steps next instead of like mm -hmm. squandering it by mm -hmm. trying to show off or share it on a, right. like a, a, a fleeting platform of so, so, you know, it's like, this is precious. This is like, mm -hmm. uh, and ironically, they're going to ask me to do a lecture in Bexley, November the 9th about Amina and black artists in Columbus. Amina Robinson's art gained national attention and remains highly respected in Columbus, Ohio. As of 2019 in Columbus, a very popular mural replicating one of Amina's pieces, titled A Street Called Home, was demolished to create more space for parking. What stood as a monolithic piece of art open to the public was now at even height with the gate that surrounded it keeping the public away. Laverne took us in the basement so we could collect the rest of the art. One of the pieces happened to be an original piece created by Amina. That's a lot of work. Let's see Amina. Wow. You let me have that? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Amina gave this to him. Uh -huh. They was working somewhere together with kids. Mm -hmm. And this is when she was making her own paper. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like buckled up. Mm -hmm. And it's a paper that she made herself. Wow. Jesus, that's, that's amazing. He said he's a real artist in the city and, you know, arranged me to fit right in. And it's just been a blessing. They've kind of taken me as family. They knew Smokey Brown and Robert Stoll and Leon Page and Roman Johnson and Ed Colson and all these artists I got to meet and hang with. And I think we have to give anger permission to exist. And so I try to create a world where we don't give anger and hate permission to exist. So the Cradle of the Grave is inspired by Central Community House, one of the places here in the city that's reached out to people and love the people like me. And as, as Grandpa Smokey said, use your gifts. Just use your gifts. So thank you, Betty and Kojo and everybody else.